Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we shall be talking about the application of remote sensing and GIS in conservation of resources. So far I assume you all are well aware of the principle of remote sensing as well as GIS and how these are used for various domains of environmental sciences. So in this module we shall be studying about the need for the assessment of resources as well as the various domains their brief overview for example uh, application of remote sensing and GIS in uh, maybe land resource management, wildlife mapping, coastal zone management, watershed analysis as well as a variety of other applications. However, we shall be dealing in detail in the other modules, but overall the purpose is to provide a brief overview so that we can understand the importance of these natural resources so that we can carry out their conservation practices. So, this module will help us understand the imp importance of resources and its management. In this module, we will also learn about the role of remote sensing and GIS in monitoring and conservation of natural resources. As you all know, the remote sensing program was started in the year 1970. So, the first satellite Landsat came in the year 1972, previously known as Earth Resources Technology Satellite. Till the year 1988, India had to use exclusively the data that was obtained from other satellites such as Landsat Satellite of United States of America. India successfully launched its own satellite, Indian Remote Sensing series of satellites, the first of which was IRS-1A that was launched in the year 1988. This was followed by launching and operationalization of a series of satellites of IRS-1B, 1C, 1D and recently the satellites such as ResourceSat, CartoSat and OceanSat satellites. These satellites have higher resolution higher repetitivity and more applicability in diversified fields. The easy availability of repetitive data in the temporal domain from remote sensing techniques provides a new dimension for spatial information processing and monitoring the features of the earth, thus generating a large volume of information. So now the question arises, why is there a need for the assessment of these resources? So, the assessment of the availability and the condition of the natural resources is the first step for the sustainable resource development plan. The, these natural resources play a critical role in the welfare of developing countries. Expansion in technology, population and economic activities have led to accelerated and unsustainable exploitation and depletion of natural resources. The degradation, especially forest cover, has led to diminishing soil fertility, soil erosion, increasing the severity of the impact of drought and a further reduction in the ability to produce food and other biological resources demanded by human and animal population. The natural resource management is a discipline in the management of natural resources with a particular focus on how management affects the quality of life for both present as well as the future generations. So, the induction of modern technologies of geospatial domains such as remote sensing, geographical information system that is GIS as well as GPS has provided us very powerful methods for surveying, identifying, classifying, mapping, monitoring, characterization and tracking the changes in the composition, extent and distribution of several forms of the earth's resources, both renewable and non-renewable as well as living and non-living in nature. Further, remote sensing also plays a significant role in providing geo-information in a spatial format. So, the following processes are needed to assess the quantum of the resources. The first one is mapping, which includes collection of thematic and quantitative baseline data this data may be contemporary or historical. This data needs to be collected in a geographic format. The second one is measuring that is rigorous mapping process by quantifying and documenting the attributes of phenomena. The third process is modeling which is the process of describing a system under study through precise and typically mathematical relations of inputs and outputs 
and to simulate the present, past or future behavior. The last in the series is monitoring which is regular assessment of the conditions by recording the shifts or changes in natural phenomena and human activities. So, what are the material requirements or inputs for carrying out these assessment studies? As we know India has launched its INSAT series of satellites that is 1B, 1C, 2D, 2E as well as 3E which are in geostationary orbits. These satellites continuously send us data for conservation of resources. And we also know that GIS it consists of two major com components the hardware as well as the software. The hardware part includes processing unit, plotter or a printer and graphic display system while the software part includes ArcGIS, Elvis, Idrissi, MapInfo and Graph. So, a fully functional GIS system can be used to analyze the characteristics between layers to develop application maps or other management options. So, the following are the basic re requirements for mapping of the resources. The first one is topo sheet. Topo sheet that are used in India are survey of India topographical maps that are used on a scale of 1 is to 50,000. These are generally considered as the base maps. The next one is thematic maps. Georeferenced topographical maps besides satellite data such as IRS 1D, panchromatic data and linear imaging cell sensing scanners, Google Earth, vegetation, forest covers, lithology, soil types, land use land cover and baseland maps can be used as are utilized as thematic maps. The source of data for thematic maps may be geological survey of India or national bureau of soil survey besides land use planning. This remote sensing satellite data that are used for the study include IRS 1C 1D, list 3 and list 4, panchromatic data as well as Google Earth with a resolution higher than 5 meter. Some of the websites where the spatial data is freely available are Soil Data Mart, Data Gateway, Center for Geographic Information in Michigan, Geographical Management Systems, Indiana Geological Survey, United States Geological Survey popularly known as USGS and Great Lakes Information Network. Besides this, another requirement is of software. Once the data is downloaded, it is easy to evaluate the data with the help of software such as ISRI's ArcGIS, MapInfo or ADAS Imagine software. So, now coming to the resource related issues in India, as we know the major problems that are related to resource conservation in India are deforestation, soil degradation as well as loss of biodiversity. Deforestation of tropical lands has become an issue of very significant importance. GIS helps us in getting the factual information on the rate, extent and the location of deforestation. By using GIS and remote sensing, one can be able to map deforestation rate, determine the causal factors and may also forecast the future risk maps. Such information is vital to provide guidance or regulation against inappropriate use of forest resources. The second category is of soil degradation. Soil degradation is one of the most important challenges that the mankind is currently facing. It affects the soil quality and quantity of resources thus affecting the productivity. The soil becomes less able to support plant and animal growth as there is a decline in the level of available moisture and the nutrient reduces biological activity. Development of effective land degradation control program requires the identification of areas that are vulnerable to soil degradation process and quantification of volume of soil loss. GIS and remote sensing data can be used to identify areas that are at potential risk to extensive soil erosion, loss of vegetation cover, etc. The next is the environmental pollution. When a pollution incidence occurs, it is imperative to quickly identify sensitive downstream environment in case of water that may be adversely affected by the exposure to toxic substances and thus prioritize the various components of response. Thus, determination of downstream movement 
of a pollutant within a river network is also an important component of water resource management. Information on measurement of the distance from a pollution source upstream to a drinking water intake downstream and associated flow data would assist to help in managing pollution. Next one is the loss of biodiversity. The most significant beginning in satellite based remote sensing was made in 1972 as I already discussed that it is the Landsat data. So, it was launched by National Aeronautics and Space Agency which paved the way for the modern remote sensing application in many fields. Data collected by Landsat 1 provided new hope especially to developing countries to monitor and manage their natural resources. As a result, an improved understanding of forest, crop, soil, urban growth, land degradation and many other features and processes could be easily identified. So, now let us look into the applications of remote sensing and GIS in resource management. Over the last few decades, remote sensing technologies has been increasingly used by the scientific community to describe and monitor a variety of system both on local as well as global scales. This technology has evolved from pure visual images that is aerial photographs as well as to multispectral imagery that is thematic mapper. With the advent of satellite remote sensing in the early 70s after launching of Landsat series of satellites by NASA. USA spot series of satellites by France and Indian remote sensing satellites by Indian Space Research Organization. There has been an increasing utilization of satellite images for inventory and monitoring of natural resources in India and abroad. The National Remote Sensing Center data reception station at Shadnagar near Hyderabad receives data from Indian remote sensing satellites in operation that is IRS 1C, 1D, IRS P1, IRS P4 that is OceanSat, ResourceSat as well as technology experiment satellite apart from foreign satellites. Earth observation data from different rem Indian remote sensing satellites have been used for mapping and making inventories of various types of natural resources such as drainage, wasteland, land use, surface water bodies, wetlands and infrastructure. These data can be used in many sectors like government, academia, planning and societal. So, IRS data may be list 3, list 4 and Cartosat satellite data have been extensively used in conservation and management of resources. So, the first methodology that is used for conservation and management of natural resources is resource inventory. It is simply the recording and assessment of the availability and condition of resources. It is useful in providing relevant information for formulating policies, law, conservation plans as well as their distribution. The next is hazard and risk assessment. For uh, as we know natural hazards such as floods, drought, cyclones, earthquakes, landslides and forest fires are unavoidable. These are natural causes of disasters. However, it is possible to minimize the potential risk that is associated with these disasters by developing early warning strategies as well as preparing and implementing the rescue plans. The next is change detection which helps us in acquiring information regarding decrease or increase in the rate of a particular resource such as forest or agricultural land that would be helpful in managing these resources. Next in the series is suitableness that is suitability. It is the process of determining the fitness of a specific landscape condition to support well defined activities. The resource monitoring is the process of observing and determining quantitative and qualitative transformations that may be occurring so as to predict their future trends. GIS provides the opportunity of undertaking effective graphical and numerical monitoring of resources such as land degradation, soil loss, forest cover loss etcetera. The last one in this is environmental impact assessment. 
it is a decision process which aims both to identify as well as anticipate the impacts on the natural environment, human health and quality of life. Okay, so, let us now briefly look at these applications in domains of environmental or natural resources. The first one is the land resource management. So, visual and digital interpretation of satellite images are implemented to prepare pre-field maps based on spectral or tone or texture or homogeneity. Pre-field interpretation maps and digitally enhanced satellite data is used on the ground to identify the different land use and land cover feature classes and to generate geo database for the land use and land cover. This figure characterizes the land use, land cover, slope, physiography, soil nature as well as soil fertility for managing the land resource effectively. The next one in the series is wildlife management. As we know project tiger was launched on 1st April 1973 with the objective of maintaining a viable population of tigers in India for scientific, economic, aesthetic, cultural and ecological values. So, at the beginning when this project was launched, there were 9 tiger reserves that were created and currently there are about 50 tiger reserves that cover a total area of about 71,000 kilometer square. Besides project tiger, other projects have also been launched for conservation of black buck, great Indian bustard and Indian ghadiyals. So, what exactly the role that remote sensing plays is in wildlife monitoring is, it can help us in zonation of fire risk, in planning the response routes, in management of protected areas, in carrying out the site suitability analysis for afforestation practices for mapping the wildlife cor corridors, for habitat suitability mapping, for real time tracking as well as for maintaining and updating the web portal of particular wildlife. Remote sensing and GIS also have varied uses in water resource management. It could be the management of watershed, flood mapping and its management that includes uh, pre and post flood mapping and monitoring, inundation of banks of rivers as well as conservation strategies. It is also used for hydrological modeling as well as management of irrigation resources. Drought monitoring and rainwater harvesting is also an important application of water resource management. With the use of satellite data, water bodies such as rivers, lakes or reservoirs as well as dams can be mapped in three dimensional domain with the help of GIS technology. Thus, de decisions regarding the most effective means of utilization of any region can always be arrived at incorporating both remote sensing and GIS. Now, coming to the next application that is coastal ecosystem management. Based on remote sensing, a variety of data pertaining to coastal zones can be collected, such as identification of plant communities in coastal areas, biomass estimation, est assessing the changes in shoreline, delineation of coastal landforms and tidal boundary, qualitative estimation of suspended sediment concentration and chlorophyll mapping. Satellite remote sensing has been found to be very valuable tool in monitoring the mangroves which can bring out the impact of deforestation on global climate. It, remote sensing and GIS can also be used for studying the coral reef ecosystems which are very sensitive ecosystems using LIST 2, LIST 3 as well as LIST 4 data of Indian remote sensing satellites. They also have varied applications in biodiversity management that includes flora as well as fauna especially within the protected areas using ground and aerial photographs. Aerial and satellite photographs can be used to determine the presence and distribution of vegetation within protected areas. These aerial photos can also be used to determine the presence and distribution of invasive species within an ecosystem. Aerial photographs can be used to ease the process of counting during animal census activities. 
geospatial data can also be used to show human encroachment into protected areas as well as animated activities outside protected areas for resolving human or wildlife conflicts. Finally, the use of GPS technology can be applied to monitor the movement of endangered species as well as newly introduced species to determine the progress and protect them from the poachers. Geospatial data can also be used to carry out EIA studies of various projects such as buildings, roads, pipeways and dams within protected areas to study their impacts. So, ne the next one is management of marine resources. When we come to marine resources, the most important application is in the potential fishery zone forecasting. An integrated approach for potential fishing zone based on chlorophyll as well as sea surface temperature has been developed, validated and transferred to Indian National Center for Coastal and Ocean Information Services for operational use. Under this scheme, 436 nodes have been established either through phone, fax, email as well as electronic display boards where potential fishery zone maps are being distributed through internet and web GIS which is accessible by about 5700 user groups besides fishery department, central government agencies and corporate and fishermen groups. Additional information about chlorophyll has been derived from Oceansat 1 data that has introduced the important link of seafood chain and thus improved the accuracy of forecast for potential fishing zone. Besides, a third parameter that is the sea surface wind has also been incorporated which indicates the effects of currents on feeding grounds. This has also helped in improving the forecasting. This technology has also been used for um, monitoring, mapping as well as management of wetlands. A scheme was launched by the Ministry of Environment and Forest called as National Wetlands Inventory and Assessment Scheme. The primary objective of this project or the scheme was to map the wetlands of India, be it natural, be it man-made, coastal or inland at a scale of 1 is to 50,000 and thus create a database with a query shell. So, for this purpose, digital analysis of two dates that is pre-monsoon and post-monsoon satellite data was carried out for uh, assessing the status of wetlands. As such, wetland atlas of all the states has been prepared and hosted on the website of Ministry of Environment that is updated from time to time. Besides, uh, remote sensing and GIS is very effective in snow and glacier studies also. Glacier inventory of Himalayas that is Indus Ganga and Brahmaputra basins has been carried out besides monitoring of snow line at the end of ablation season for estimation of glacier mass balance, estimation of retreat of Himalayan glaciers as well as snow cover monitoring. Glacial inventory has also been carried out for Indus Ganga and Brahmaputra basins covering approximately 1250 map sheets at 1 is to 50,000 scale. Glacier mass balance studies were taken up for 10 selected medium sized sub basins spread over Indian Himalayan region. The list 3 scenes were used to ascertain the boundary of glaciers using high resolution data. They were all overlaid on advanced wide field sensor scenes sequentially that is also called as AWIF. So dear students, at the end of this module, I hope you would be able to appreciate the importance of natural resources, why is there a need for the assessment of these resources and how remote sensing and GIS can help us in conserving these re resources by means of providing us baseline data as well as mapping and monitoring of these data. So, in this module at we have also studied briefly the applications of remote sensing and GIS in various fields such as land resource management, wildlife mapping, coastal zone management, coral reefs, vegetation mapping, soil analysis, 
as well as biodiversity studies. I hope you would be able to appreciate the fact that by utilizing remote sensing and GIS technologies for environmental management, a sound decision can be arrived at incorporating all these parameters, so that the resources can be conserved in an effective manner. Thank you.